MATLAB has several built-in solvers for finding solutions to boundary value problems. One of them is called BVP4C. BVP4C uses an algorithm that is a combination of collocation and finite difference methods with an adaptive mesh size so that the solver can reach specified tolerance limits. To implement BVP4C, we need at least three input arguments. The first input argument is an ODE function. The second input argument specifies the residuals for the boundary conditions. And the third input argument is a required initial guess for the value of the dependent variables at each of the points in the domain. The output argument sol is a structure that contains the solution and other information about the problem. To use BVP4C, write a script that assigns a vector representing the mesh of the points in the independent variable. And you can use the BVP init function to define initial values for the dependent variable. And then call the solver using a function handle for the ODE function and a function handle for the boundary condition residuals. The ODE function should be defined in the state space form, just like we did for initial value problems. To see how to formulate the residual function, you should look at page 383 of the methods text. Let's consider another example of a physical system that gives rise to a boundary value problem. Let's consider a cooling fin on a radiator used to transfer heat from a hot surface at temperature Tw to a surrounding gas. The heat transfer at steady state is described by a second order ordinary differential equation that can be obtained from the thermal energy balance. We use a functional form representing Newton's law of cooling to describe the heat loss to the surroundings, where alpha, k, and b are parameters, alpha being a heat transfer coefficient, k being a thermal conductivity, and b being the half thickness of the fin. If the fin is long compared to its thickness, then most of the heat transfer occurs on the upper and lower surfaces here, and there is very little heat transfer to the gas at the far edge of the fin. That means we can approximate the flux of thermal energy to the edge of the fin as being equal to zero. And if the flux of thermal energy to the edge of the fin is zero, then the gradient in temperature must be zero at x equals L. That gives us a Neumann condition at x equals L. And we have a Dirichlet condition at x equals zero where the temperature of the fin is assumed to be equal to the wall temperature. To solve this boundary value problem, we might prefer to first de-dimensionalize it. If you were to apply the Buckingham pi theorem to this problem, you would find out that there are three pi variables required. We can de-dimensionalize this by defining a dimensionless temperature, a dimensionless length parameter, and a dimensionless heat transfer parameter. Rewriting this differential equation in the dimensionless form gives this second order equation with these boundary conditions. To solve this using the finite difference method, we first write the central difference formula for the second derivative, and then substitute that into the defining equation. We can simplify this by multiplying by little h squared and combining the terms containing like values of theta. Consider finding a solution to this problem using the finite difference method with a mesh containing just five points at 0, 0.25, 0.5, 0.75, and one. Since the value of theta is not known at zeta equals one, we need an additional equation describing that mesh point. We could write a three point backward difference formula for the derivative d theta d zeta at zeta equals one, and recall that we know d theta d zeta from the boundary condition. We could alternatively write a two point central difference, which would require that we add a point that's not really in the domain at zeta equals 1.25 and approximate that the heat transfer continues from the point one to 1.25 according to the same defining equation. We now have five equations and five unknowns. Our unknowns are the values of theta at 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, one and 1.25, which is the imaginary point outside of our domain. If we write the system of equations representing the defining equations at each of the mesh points, we have a linear system of equations, which in this case is not tridiagonal because we have a non-zero element here. These unknown points in the domain represent theta at 0.25, theta at 0.5, theta at 0.75, theta at 1, and theta at 1.25. 
This linear system of equations can easily be solved using methods from chapter 4 of the methods text.